we have made several passes through the images, looking for things, cropping things, fixing things, getting them all ready for our slideshow. We are in our collection right down here. There might be one more pass you might want to make here, and that would be the order of them. So you might decide to put them into a different order. Okay, this will be the order of the slideshow, so be careful on what you do. So I guess that would be like a fourth pass, is getting them ready. Now we could add some if we wanted to. We could delete some if we didn't want them. We're still in control, but we're ready to go to slideshow. So let's go into the slideshow module and look at the options that we have available. Let's go into slideshow. Now we have our film strip down here, so we can see the images. Over here, let's start on the left. We have something called a template browser. Besides, of course, we have the ubiquitous preview up there if you want to use it. Templates. We can make templates out of what you see over here and use them over and over again. Background colors, things like that. There are some that are already made. We'll make our own later. You do have our collection, and we're right there in Key West. Now, it is saying it's unsaved. So I'll tell you what. Let's start out by saving this thing. Create saved slideshow. Let's give it a name of Key West. Key West slides inside of Key West. Don't need virtuals or target. Click create. And there it is. Now, if you go back in time to when we did our book and we saved our book in the photo spin area, see the icon looks like a book. Okay, that's a book save. This one has that little square with the arrow in it, and that is the icon for a slideshow. So now we have that. Anytime we make changes, they'll just automatically be saved there. We've already saved it. We're ready to move on. Let me close that for a minute and get out of here. Down here, this button automatically takes you to the first slide. This button and this button obviously allow you to navigate, but of course you could use your left and right arrow keys just as easily. You can use all the film strip photos. You say, why would I not want to use all the film strip photos? Well, think of it this way. We haven't gotten here yet. But you could put an image like a watermark in the background. In order for it to be there, it has to be down here. But you don't want it in the slideshow. You made it in Photoshop or something. It's just a random kind of background that you want to spice up the slideshow. So it's down here. So you come here and you either say just use the ones I'm selecting and don't select that one or probably the more permanent solution and we've already done this is flag the photos with the ones that you want to use in the slideshow and don't flag the ones that you're using for things like backgrounds. So that's why that's there. We do have a button here that allows us to play the slideshow if you want to see it up here actually preview not play. This is a title slide we'll talk about that in a minute. And it's just kind of showing you basically the generic way that these are going to work. You want to get out of it, click here, press escape, and you're back in business. Over here, we can use that to add text. We'll do that later. Over here, you do have a preview button just like this, and you have a play button that actually gives you a full screen. Up here, our options. Number one, our options. Go ahead and open that one up. You have zoom to fill the frame. Now, typically, I don't want to do that because you lose things when you zoom, but you have that option. Put a stroke around the border right there. You can make that bigger or smaller if you want. Let's put about a five stroke on that. And you can change the color if you want to up here. Do you want to cast shadow? That's not a bad touch. I think let's go ahead and leave the cast shadow on. We have opacity, offset, radius, and angle of the shadow. Now the angle is kind of going down and to the right, which means the sun would be like up here coming down this way. In most cases, shadows are best if they are down and to the right in terms of just what we expect to see. Because we have a tendency to think of things like sunlight as being up, so the shadow would be coming down this way. And when we track on something, we usually track left to right. And so it's more comfortable if it's going down and to the right. Anyway, cast shadow. Next is layout. In layout, we have guides. Now, the guides are actually controlling the image right here. Everything is linked together right now. If I come over here and move them, the guides are controlling how the image is being displayed. Now, I can turn off link all and just do one if I want to. Maybe push it more over to the right or to the left. And maybe put something else over here like text. Let's go ahead and link them all and put that back to normal. Overlays. Now, overlays, number one, are an identity plate. And we talked about these a long time ago. That's like this up here, the identity plate. If I click here and turn that on, you can see it up there. Now, you click here if you want to edit. So instead of having that up there, 
I could come in here and say use text and type in One of a Kind Productions, Inc. And go ahead and click OK. And now it's there. Now I can change the opacity, the scale. You can render it behind the image if you want to. Watermarking. Watermarking is, well, like this. And again, if you go here, that's standard text. If you go in here, we've been here before, you can add watermarks if you want to. Let's go ahead and get out of here and turn that one off. Believe it or not, you can put your rating stars up there too. There they are. Let me turn off the identity plate for a minute. Those are, yes, the stars that we added to images when we cataloged them. Okay, let me turn that one off. You can do text overlays. Now, text overlays involve doing a couple of things. Number one, getting some text up there, because right now there's nothing available. So we click here, and we type in some text. Key West, Florida. Press the return key, and that's the return on Mac, enter in Windows, and there it is. Now, remember, this is a text overlay. It's not image information, which means if I go to this image, it's still going to say Key West, Florida. Okay, and that's a text overlay. Let's come back down a little bit. Now we can put a drop shadow on it if we want to, and sometimes that helps to identify it. And you might want to go through all the images and see if that color is going to work for you too. Next is backdrop. Now in backdrop, you have basically the ability to add an image. Well, here's why I talked about flagging the ones that you want to use and not flagging the one you use for a background. So if we say, pull this up to here and put that in the background. Now that's a little bit garish, I understand. You can change the opacity right down here if you want to. Let me undo that. That won't work, but it's going to be on every image. You can do a color wash. Now, color wash, of course, is like a gradient. And we can change the color right up here of the wash if you want to change to different colors. Or you can use a simple background color right here. And you can click here to change that color. And again, it will be on all your slides. Here's titles. Now, titles are your first and your last pages if you want to use them in your slideshow, the intro screen. Now, you can use an identity plate if you want to, or you can click here and edit. Go into, say, stylized text or have a graphic if you want one. You locate the file, you bring it in. PNGs are the best to use here. Andy's amazing Key West images. Now, we click OK, and it's black, so I can't see it. So what we're going to do here is come over into the intro screen right here, and let's change the color of the intro screen instead of changing the text color. See it right there? Kind of small right now. So let's change the scale. Andy's amazing Key West images. Now we'll leave this one alone. We'll just leave that one as the identity plate so you can see it. And if we come down here, the last area is playback. Now in playback, you can use audio if you want to. You can use video if you want to. You can see your playback screen here, identifies it for you, and there's the image. It says it's number one. You can blank other screens. Now, I work on multiple monitors. I've got three monitors. And so if I want the others blanked out when I'm working, then I would turn that on. If I turn it off, the other monitor is still got whatever it's got on it. Over here, do you want manual? Now, that's usually what I do because I use these for teaching. And I want to control the process with a remote or the right arrow key on my keyboard or, you know, whatever. You can control it manually. The default is slides every four seconds, fades every 2.5 seconds. Typically, I don't want random order for teaching. That wouldn't make sense. But you might want random order here, and you want it to repeat when it's done. Now, we've seen the preview. We've already done a preview. That's over here. What would this look like if it were actually running? And let's finish up with that. Click play. Andy's amazing Key West images. So every image will come up, no audio yet. Stay there. Fade out, two and a half second fade. You can change that and go to the next one. So you can decide if you like it, if the images are up there too long or not long enough, etc. If you're done with this, and we are, go ahead and press the escape key and you go right back in. Now don't forget, the cool thing is we don't have to save anything. It's saved automatically. So we've gone through the basics actually did create a slideshow here, but we're not done. We have a few more things we need to talk about.